What's going on guys? So recently I got inspired. I was watching my buddy Justin's videos, his last several videos, and he did on designer and on niche actually, the best smelling niche fragrances and or designer fragrances in his collection. And it got me thinking, you know, that that can sometimes be a revolving door. And it kind of inspired me to do my take on it with my 10 current favorite niche fragrances to sniff on. Now, it's not necessarily something I just wear all the time, but it's ones that if nothing else, I just go back to them to pull the cap off, maybe smell from the atomizer, maybe spray it in the air, do a random spray somewhere on my arm or my hand, or ones I just seem to gravitate to and sporadically wear at random times. So these are the, my 10 best smelling niche fragrances in my collection currently, the recording of this video. So stay tuned. So I figured we'd start off with something fresh, bright, fresh, natural, believable citrus, fresh greens. We are talking about Aqua de Parma's Colonia Pura. I got this one kind of midsummer, late summer, I guess you could say. I ended up doing a full review on this one. Yeah, I got it sometime in the summer because when I went back home to Louisiana, I had it with me. That was when I did the review. I had wore this on a travel day. This is just beautiful, authentic. There's orange, there's bergamot. This beautiful, mild green pedigree note. Love it. Oh, this is so good. Very clean, musky tone. There's a little bit of a white floral hit. Doesn't make it feminine in any way, though I do believe anybody can wear this. This is about as genderless of a fragrance as it gets. I mean, no fragrance actually has a gender, but some lean a bit more masculine tone and some have a bit more feminine tone. This one has neither. I find it to have neither of those. This is perfectly walking the line of unisex. It is gorgeous. It is not the longest lasting of fragrances. It is an eau de cologne concentration, but it is very high quality, natural smelling oils. Like I said, very believable citrus and fresh greens in here. There is a synthetic known as ozonic notes from what I understand. And it does have this bright area appeal, almost aldehydic in many ways, kind of that brightness to the top note. This is a gorgeous, almost mouthwatering type of citrus to this fragrance. Lovely stuff, a little bit of spice, but doesn't take away from any of the freshness. This is absolutely beautiful. I love smelling this one, I really do. It was an easy choice because not everything in this video is fresh. This is more of current taste. Hence the reason I said at the recording of this video, these are my favorite. So a lot of these are on the heavier side and this is kind of, I just randomly, I leave this one on my rotation table. I haven't been wearing it because it's much colder now. Not the most ideal weather for this, but I just keep sniffing on it and sniffing on it and I'll randomly spray it on my hand. Just beautiful. If you've never tried this fragrance before, you should definitely get a sample and experience it. Is it mind-blowingly original, never smelled anything like it? Not necessarily, but if you want something just natural smelling, authentic, believable citrus that's just very refreshing, easy going, and a pleasure to smell, you might want to check out Aqua de Parma's Colonia Pura. This next one, even though I don't wear it all that often, I do wear it randomly throughout the year because this is one of those fresher fragrances that can cut through the cold. I can absolutely wear it in the frigid temperatures we have been currently having. I've This has kind of been a guilty pleasure of mine recently. I keep going back to it to pull the cap and smell it. It's one of the most beautiful citrus fragrances I've ever smelled. It is from Raja Parfums. This is Harrods Parfum Pour Homme. This is gorgeous. You can see that juice level starting to drop on this one. I do like to wear this one randomly. Oh, this is so beautiful. It's got this almost bitter orange. A little bit of bitter orange smell, nice and warm. It's animalic and musky. It's got a little bit of this mild green tone, but it's a medley of sweet, juicy, dense citruses. It's actually classified as a citrus fragrance, if my memory serves me correctly. This is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance. Has a little bit of a green feel. You'll get a little bit of an herbaceous spice to it. I believe there's some oak moss vetiver combo, something like that in the base of this fragrance. Um, it's not the most simplistic fragrance by any means. It's actually quite deep. There's a lot of notes here, as are a lot of Raja Parfum's fragrances. Uh, this one's no exception to that. I guess you could call it unwritten rule because it's old world perfumery with a lot of notes, a lot of layers to the scent. It's not always the easiest to detect specific notes. It's more about creating these just unbelievable accords to be for lack of a better term. And that's kind of the case here. You do get, like I said, juicy, dense, almost sweet, but still mouthwatering citruses. 
muskiness, like an animalic musky tone that's not overdone, blended just right in the background, but still detectable with some woods, a little bit of herbaceous tone, like this green spice. Like I said, kind of an oak moss feel. I believe oak moss is in this fragrance. There's a little bit of florals. There's some woods. It does have a nice woody presence to it. On the denser side, obviously, this is a pure parfum. I don't know the exact oil concentration, uh, but it's at minimum 25%. It's very thick. It's a very thick aroma. That's why I say this is one of the fresher citrus dominated fragrances that can definitely cut through the cold because of the composition's complexity and the density of the notes. The just the oil concentration is very high. It really does the trick. The CIs on this is absolutely magical. I love this fragrance. Not the cheapest and easiest thing to get your nose on. I understand that completely. Man, it's a fantastic experience worth having. It's like I said, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. As of late, in the last week or so, I've been going back to this bottle, pulling the cap and smelling it over and over and over. Just, I really think it's one of the best smelling niche fragrances in my collection. It's Roger Parfum's Herod's Parfum Pour Homme. This next fragrance is on my rotation table, and I don't have it slated to wear tomorrow. Actually, the day this video goes live, I plan on wearing it in the next couple of days. It, I do want to wear this one. I was randomly kind of unboxing and pulling caps off and smelling some of my Kajal perfumes fragrances recently because I haven't been wearing a lot from the house. And I was just so captivated by this fragrance. It needed to go in the rotation immediately, and I needed to talk to you guys about it. It's called Jury from Kajal Perfumes. This is a gorgeous, spicy, sweet, almost gourmandy, lightly floral fragrance. Does lean a tad feminine, but I mean, more unisex overall. Oh man, and it's got kind of this almost animalic honeycombed type of smell to this ambery honeyed sweetness that it has going. This is gorgeous. A lot of the fragrances from this house are gorgeous. Absolutely worth discovering. You can get discovery sets from the different collections from the house. I implore you, look around on the website, Look at some of the note breakdowns, see what kind of captivates you, and get the discovery set for that collection. This is part of the Warday collection, which Warday is amazing. Yasmin is amazing. This is fantastic. Um, trying to think the purple one. What's the name of the purple one? I'm drawing a blank right now. The purple one, I guess, is what we'll call it for right now. I'm drawing a blank for some reason. Um, all beautiful fragrances within their own right, but this is kind of the sweet, ambery, almost gourmand feel. But there's such an animalic tone to it. It's got this like honey absolute smell that I keep referring to, obviously, that just separates this one. There's some florals. I believe there's a little bit of everything, actually. I think, if I remember correctly, there's yellow florals, white florals, and obviously a pink or red. I don't know how you would want to consider rose. But I want to say there's rose, possibly some jasmines, the white floral, and lang lang. I do remember Lang Lang being in there. You can smell it. It's distinguishable in this fragrance. It's very lovely. That's kind of what gives this this lightly feminine edge. Maintains a little bit of a tropical feel, to be honest. Um, I wouldn't call it the most beach vibe of fragrances by any means, but the Lang Lang, the way it's done here with the honey and everything, kind of does give a little bit of a tropical feel to the fragrance. It's just beautiful. It's not overly spiced. It's not overly sweet. It's not overly floral. It's very well balanced. It's a nuclear performer, too. This stuff is strong. You don't need a lot of sprays. It's just such an enjoyable scent profile. Hence the reason. I mean, you can tell I love the way these smell. I keep having to pull caps and smell them over and over. Just really good stuff. Definitely worth getting a sample and trying. It doesn't remind me of anything else uh, that I've smelled before. I haven't smelled every fragrance ever created, but it's quite unique in my collection and one that had to jump in the rotation immediately. Definitely one of the best-smelling niche fragrances I own is Jewelry from Kajal Perfumes. This next one's not even a fragrance for me. My wife has been wearing this one quite a bit lately. She's only been doing like three or four sprays because it's pretty strong on her skin. Her sillage is magnificent. I keep wanting to walk in her trail. Every time we leave the house to go do something, she's been wearing this lately. It's kind of been her go-to. It's gorgeous. I love this fragrance, the way it smells. More so than the men's version, which I wear pretty often. This is from Mossy. This is called Into Me for her. And... I'm definitely into the way this one smells. This one has, it's got a little bit of gourmand facets. It's got some patchouli. It's got some rose, some almond, very creamy, 
lightly bitter type of almond. And there's a little bit of coffee as it starts to settle. Um, I don't get a lot of the coffee right away, but as it starts to settle into the heart, you get more of this roasted coffee bean type of smell. Not so much a fresh brewed pot, but actually smelling like a handful of ungrinded roasted coffee beans. That's really how it comes across. Beautiful, beautiful, natural smelling fragrance. This is, this is so magnificent. This is definitely the better of the two fragrances. Look, I love the men's fragrance. It's a gorgeous citrus ginger fragrance on my skin. A lot of watermelon, bergamot, and ginger and woods is mainly what I get from it. Gotta smell this in the air. But the women's, this is magnificent. Guys, if you were looking for a knock your socks off fragrance for your lady, get a sample of this. Let her try this. Don't just blind buy it. Let her try this smell it coming off of her skin. I got to tell you, this is, this is an, a, an aphrodisiac arousing type of scent profile coming off of a woman. I got to tell you, it is very provocative smelling. This stuff is magnificent. That's why I had to feature it. I actually chose to feature the one for my wife over the one for me because it smells that damn good. I continue to be impressed by Mossy. They only have two fragrances out currently. They're both bangers. I can't wait to see what's in the future for this brand. Absolutely remarkable work. I'm telling you, guys, get a sample. Smell, let your lady try this. Smell this on your lady. Any ladies that watch this video, you should try this fragrance. It's that damn good. It smells amazing. Mossy into me for her. Now that I've gotten to the colder weather, uh, this seems to be my preferred version of this fragrance. Yes, the original is one of my all-time favorite fragrances. End of story, period. But the added warm spice, the animalic nature, the increase in... This leathery tone, just Mancera Intense Cidrat Boise, just seems to do the trick for this time of year. Ridiculous performance. Going nose blind is pretty much a guarantee every time I spray this one. But it smells so good. You maintain a lot of that lemon, bergamot, and fruitiness from the original. You don't lose all the freshness, even though it is indeed a true intense flanker to what it's namesaked after. This is an intense version of Cidrat Boise. In every sense of the word, too, it's an intensified aroma. The performance is intensified greatly. It's super long-lasting, extremely loud. The sillage is ridiculous on this fragrance. Man, like I said, much more warm and spicy. Still has that zesty, bright, almost sharp type of lemon. It's kind of got that type of pop to it when you smell the lemon and the black currant very fruity but still very warm and spicy and like i said there's a there's a nice muskiness to this there's more of an animalic tone from this cambodian oud that they use this go around and the leather is intensified it's much more leathery in its base than its original i love the way this one smells if i had to keep just one i guess i would still keep the original for its added versatility but I got to tell you, for the colder weather, like I said, this is an in-the-moment type of video for me. In the moment, right now, for the weather I'm experiencing, this is the one for sure. Very, very hard to beat. I love this stuff. You should really get a sample and try it if you haven't yet. Even if you have the original, it's worth trying. One of the best smelling, for sure, intense Cidrat Boise. We're moving into the time of year when I like spices. I like incense. I like things like that. Much more oud-based fragrances. This is one of my favorites. I love this. It's from Mamouage. It's called Epic Man. Nothing new, but I damn sure love this fragrance. It is magnificent. I wear it for special occasions. <sighs> Wore it for Thanksgiving last year. Probably going to wear it for Thanksgiving this year, to be quite completely honest with you. It's a showstopper. It's a conversation starter. It is not your average run-of-the-mill fragrance counter department at a department store type of fragrance. This is Middle Eastern quality done right in my personal opinion. It is a loud and long-lasting fragrance, while not absurdly loud, unless you spray on the heavier side, then I'm sure it's absurdly loud, but a great sillage, very assertive type of fragrance, gives a strong presence, especially when you're dressed the part, when you're dressed up, not necessarily to the nines, but a step up or two above casual for sure. This makes a statement in my experience. I love this fragrance. It will never get old for me. I had a decant before I bought a bottle. This was not a blind buy, which a lot of my stuff is blind buys. That was not the case with Epic Man. This is kind of my favorite fragrance from the house, even though I love a bunch of the offerings from Amouage. It is definitely one of my favorite niche houses. 
Epic Man is just my go-to. If I could only keep one from the house, it would probably have to be this, even though I love, 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 love Reflection Man. I love Journey Man. I love Boundless. I love Enclave, and so on and so on. This is the one. This is definitely the one for me, in my opinion. It's one of the best-smelling niche fragrances in my collection. Hands down. Medicinal Oud Spices and Incense. It's Amouage Epic Man. This one has grown on me so much that I, it's getting pretty damn close to knocking Triumph of Bacchus off its pedestal. This is one of the best smelling rose fragrances for men I've ever put my nose on. Just this rose and wood, like Mysore sandalwood combination is ridiculous. With Adonis Awakens from Argos. This is awesome, guys. This is another, everything in this video. I really encourage you guys to get a sample and try. You can get a carded sample of this and try it for yourself. Has a little bit of this red berries type of smell on the top. I believe it's a raspberry note. Um, it offers a radiance to the top. There's a rose absolute here. Like I said, Mysore sandalwood. It has kind of the core DNA of one of the previous releases from the house called Danye, where that was a very sensual blonde wood fragrance. You maintain some of what that fragrance was about. And believe it or not, for being dominated with two different types of rose, this is actually a much more masculine fragrance than that. There's this warm, ambery, almost spicy feel to the fragrance that blends perfectly, complements the rose absolute. So I believe it's Bulgarian rose and a rose absolute, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong. I think that's the two types of rose. But it's surprisingly very masculine, very manly scent profile for being a rose-based fragrance. Like I said, you don't come across that too often. There's very few that I feel do the job right when it comes to a men's rose fragrance. And this is definitely one that's at the top of the list for me. Performance is absurd. I love smelling this one. It's kind of engulfed the airspace right here from that spray. It's, I mean, they're all powerful in this video, to be honest with you, minus the fresh fragrance. But this is definitely one of the most powerful in this video. You don't need a lot of sprays. It's very elegant. The quality is top tier. You just can't go wrong here. It can work casually. I've worn it casually. But it definitely dresses up very well. It's a very assertive, strong presence statement maker. Kind of like Epic Man, just a completely different set of circumstances when it comes to the scent profile. This is magical. Uh, this is one of the best releases of 2022, in my opinion. Argos Adonis Awakens. Some of you may have expected to see this fragrance in this video because I rave about it every time I speak of this fragrance. It's my favorite vanilla fragrance. The vanilla benzoin spice combo here is just magnificent. With Nishane Ani. Again, like I said, no secret here. This is, I don't know if this would ever not be in this video topic, to be honest. It's creamy, dense. It's a little bit of woody nature to it to blend with the vanilla. The benzoin here offers a little bit of a boozy top pop at the top of it. Just in the opening, it starts to settle into a much more vanilla heavy, ambery feel. The spices aren't overdone here, but it is warm and spicy in the background. Noticeable, but not overdone. It's in the background. The benzoin and the vanilla are able to shine in this fragrance. It's got a strong ambery presence. Amber vanilla. There's a ton of fragrances that do that combo out on the market, but not that many do it as well as this. Fragrances like Grand Soir come to mind from Mason Francis Kirchhoff, for example. That's another gorgeous benzoin amber vanilla that doesn't smell exactly like this one. Not completely redundant to own both. I own both. I love both. That's my two favorite amber benzoin vanilla fragrances. This is my number one, though, guys. If I had to just keep one. This is it. This is one of the most seductive and sexy aromas I have ever put my nose on. I love it. My wife loves it. Another one, just like everything else in this video. I encourage you, get a sample and try this. Don't just take my word for it. Don't blind buy these fragrances. Get your nose on them. Just because I adore them doesn't necessarily mean you will. And just because it seems to, you know, get its fair share of compliments from me, there's no guarantees it will do the same for you. Everything is situational when it comes to fragrances and wardrobe and your energy and your just overall presentation. But I'll tell you what, fragrances like this can really heighten the chance if that's something that's important to you because it's not necessarily important to me that someone tell me I smell good, but boy, it sure does make you feel good when somebody pays you a nice compliment, right? And fragrances like Nishane Ani, like I said, definitely heighten that chance because it just smells so amazing. One of the best smelling niche fragrances in my collection, for sure. This is the other masculine rose fragrance that did it right. You know, just like with Adonis Awakens, 
There's not too many rose fragrances that I can say, that's for men. That's very masculine. And it's due to the heavy incense and ambery tone with the oud to this fragrance. And don't think traditional oud rose combos, because no, no, no. That is not the case with Zaharoff Signature Rosé. Definitely one of my favorite fragrances in my collection. I just wore it two nights ago. Um, I had a good shave with the shave set. And of course, I gave myself a few sprays of the fragrance. Though more of a masculine rose, definitely smells great on ladies. My wife has her own bottle. Love when she wears it. Love to walk in her trail of her sillage when she wears this one. It's more sweet rose on her. It's more incense, very smoky rose on me. It's more sweet and warm wood and rose on Justin. Shout out to my man, Justin, the man that inspired this video in the first place. I have smelled this on him many times. The oud comes out a bit more on him. It's got this warm wood smell. And then that sugar vanilla bean combo, the sweetness kind of comes out on his skin a bit more. Where, don't get me wrong, I get some of the sweetness too, but it's most of the incense. Very incense dominant coming off of my skin with this one. Pretty much if there's incense in a fragrance of any kind, it just jives with my skin chemistry and it'll come out, and that's the case here, and that's one of the reasons that I think this is so magnificent. I love this stuff. I love to smell it out the atomizer. I love to lather up my brush and give myself a good shave. I love to splash the aftershave, feel the warmth and the radiance that comes from that aftershave splash, and then spray some of the fragrance. It's just magnificent. Oh, and I do have a few of, well, I only got one left now, of the soap bar another wonderful experience in the shower to lather up the soap bar this is just one of the best scent profiles ever created in my opinion claude deer did magnificent definitely one of the best smelling niche fragrances in my collection zaharoff signature rose last but not least i'm so excited that i have the weather to wear this one now it is a cold cutter through and through this is warm this is gourmand sweet powdery very oud funk heavy but not in a bad way. It's done right because of the honey, amber, vanilla combo with all of that cinnamon spice. We're talking about Montal's Honey Oud. Another one that probably doesn't surprise a lot of you that it's in this video because I rave about this fragrance. This is one of my favorites for the cold, and it's cold right now. <sighs> so good. So, so, so good. This is awesome. I have a trip coming up, and I think this is going to make the trip because it's going to be very cold where I'm at. I'm leaving cold to go to cold, basically, and I think this one's going to make the trip. This is, this is something special, guys. Like I said, it's that simple. Picture oud chips. Nice little pile of oud chips. Coat it in honey. Sprinkle vanilla on it. Shave some vanilla on the top. It's going to create this warm, ambery look and tone. It's a little soft and powdery. It's sweet. It's spicy. And it's very oud heavy. This is one of the most wearable and delectable smelling oud fragrances I've ever put my nose on. This is another one that will probably always, anytime I revamp this topic, this is probably going to be in here because it's just that good. Another one, perfectly unisex, as, as long as you're into the style oud that Mancera and Montal use, that Pierre Montal uses in his fragrances. If you're familiar with that, this one's a must try. Abso freaking lutely. It's so good. It it's what's in the name, honey and oud. Yeah, that's the two most dominating notes for sure, as well as some warm amber, soft and powdery, a little dry. It's, it's nice and spicy from cinnamon. The sweet vanilla. It's man, it's Montal's honey oud. Well, that is the 10 best smelling niche fragrances in my collection according to me at the moment. I'm living in the moment with this video topic. If I was to do this video two weeks from now, some of these may get changed out because I love variety in fragrance. That's what I love about this hobby and this passion that we share. There's a lot of variety out there and you don't have to stick with just one thing. You don't have to stick with one style. You can be super seasonal like I am. Man, I'm one of the most seasonal creatures on the planet when it comes to fragrances. Once I dub something special for a certain season, that's pretty much the only time I'm going to wear it. Once I dub it special for a certain situation, that's pretty much the only time I'm going to wear it. So the variety is great for me personally. And even if I don't wear them all the time, these 10, these are the ones I like to sniff on the most, even if it's just out the atomizer. And until next time, do me a real quick favor. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe. So I do appreciate all the feedback. And I love hearing from you guys. 
with some of the best smelling niche fragrances that you own. I love reading comments like that. Um, I'm very curious. I could have did 20, probably could have did 30, but I wanted to keep it down to the most special 10. Uh, five would not have been enough. That had been too difficult. 10 was hard enough. I debated on doing 15, but I wanted, I got inspired by Justin. He did 10. I wanted to keep it to 10. And until next time, I will say if you get your hands on any of the 10 I featured in this video and you give them a spray now, I'm extremely confident you'll thank me later. Because if your taste is anything like mine, aligns with me in any way, shape, or form, you're going to love these. Have a good one, guys.